So thank you all for joining today's Sustainability Plan public webinar. Um, we're looking forward to some great dis discussion. So with that, we'll go ahead and, and get moving. First, we would like to do just a quick WebEx orientation. As you joined today, your video was disabled and lines were muted. If you have questions throughout the meeting um, about technical, if you're having any sort of technical issues, feel free to use the chat, um, which I'll review. We also have some time reserved at the end for public comment. Uh, so please raise your hand to queue for public comment. And then that icon can be found in the lower toolbar of the WebEx screen. If you're having audio issues throughout the meeting, uh, go ahead and you can select the audio settings, the three dots next to the X and change those as needed, as you can see on the screen. Next, we'll go through our rules of engagement. So today to promote engagement, there will be some live polls throughout the presentation. So go ahead and get your, your smartphone ready or um, browser and we'll be using menti.com for that. Following the presentation, we have time reserved for public comments, specifically for feedback on the sustainability plan. To queue to speak, um, you will be able to raise your hand or press star three if you're calling in. And then each participant will have one opportunity to speak um, if, if they would like. And then to be considered of those who are queued, please keep your comments to two minutes. Um, and then always you can uh, send additional comments to sustainability at newjerseytransit.com. And then just to note that the chat is available if there's technical issues, and I'll be rev reviewing that throughout the meeting as needed. And now I'll go ahead and turn it over to, to David Sotland with New Jersey Transit Energy and Sustainability. Thank you, Liz, and welcome to everyone on the call today. We appreciate that you are here and we're excited to share with you the work that we've done on the sustainability plan. This is our second of four webinars for this project. Today, we're going to cover the following. We're going to provide an overview of the project. We're going to brief you on the work that we did with the survey and industry benchmarking. We're going to talk about sustainability priorities and data management. And lastly, we're going to discuss some next steps. Now listen, we've made some progress to date and we're really proud of that, but we still know we have a lot of work to do here. So as Liz said, I'm David Sotland and with me today are John Geithner, Aaron Hill and Harrison Weiss from the New Jersey Transit Energy and Sustainability team. HDR is providing overall project management and we have Jennifer, Marcella, Audrey and Liz from the HDR team. Additionally, BEM supports this project with data management and Stokes assists with external stakeholder engagement. And we have Kevin from BEM and Nicole from Stokes here today. Harrison? Yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, so we discussed at our last public webinar um, the importance of a sustainability plan, but we think it would be good to just go over this again very quickly. Um, so, first of all, this process, the sustainability plan development process is going to help us uh, identify um, some of the important uh, issues and topics in sustainability for NJ Transit to target and track. Uh, we're developing our, a plan with our stakeholders, including everybody on this call today, uh, that recognizes our organization's role in the state's energy and environmental goals, while also supporting uh, NJ Transit's own capital and strategic plans. And so the result will be a living document that will lay out uh, NJ Transit's long term plan to position our organization as a leader in sustainable public transportation. So that's the short of it. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat as we go through this. So I'll turn it back over to Dave, who will walk us through the milestones of this plan development process. We began by laying on priority sustainability issues through a survey and interviews benchmarking of pure transit agencies and development of a sustainability inventory. We want to ensure that we are working on issues that matter most to our agency, our employees, our customers, and the communities that we serve. We initiated data collection in the early stages of the projects to help ensure that the metrics and goals for the plan are generally measurable based on data that is available today. Also, it will help us identify areas where we need to focus our data collection moving forward. We will collaborate to construct a sustainability framework that is goal oriented with clearly defined performance indicators, operational metrics and strategies. We will create a governance structure for oversight for our 
long term sustainability goals and implementation of the sustainability plan. And we will set a vision for the sustainability plan, which will include branding concept, tone, messaging, and communication techniques. Aaron. Thanks, Dave. The 3 traditional pillars of sustainability are social environmental and economic. New Jersey Transit's sustainability plan will focus primarily on the environmental aspects of sustainability. Most organizations take an incremental approach to sustainability, and what we are discussing today is really a starting point for NJ Transit. And the plan in the future may be expanded to include additional economic and social indicators. I'll now turn it over to Marcella to discuss the sustainability survey. Thanks, Aaron. So one of our first tasks was to conduct a sustainability survey. And this survey was a formal engagement process that really was the starting point for helping us understand the relative importance of sustainability themes. The sustainability issues were considered in two ways. So first, we talked to internal leaders at New Jersey Transit and asked them to provide feedback on the relative potential impact of these themes to New Jersey Transit's operations. And while we know that each leader is not a subject matter expert on these topics, it was intended to, for them to offer an informed perspective based on their role and experience on the potential impact. Second, external stakeholders were asked to share their view on the relative potential for sustainability themes to influence their perceptions and the decisions they make about New Jersey Transit. This was a more subjective view, but represented the opinions and perspectives of a wide variety of stakeholders. So you may remember that the survey was announced by press release and during a public webinar, our first one, and we made it available on the New Jersey Transit website. It was promoted on digital display boards and on social media. The sustainability survey was completed early in the planning process to provide the team with greater confidence that we were focused on the right things. You'll see that the survey, uh, the survey was straightforward. There were just four questions, and we asked participants to rank sustainability themes and aspects relative to each other, as well as indicate their expectations for what information should be shared with New Jersey Transit. The survey inquired about themes and aspects. The themes represented a broad category that includes one or more specific aspects. So, for example, here you'll see air quality, and that included two specific aspects criteria air pollutants, and greenhouse gas emissions. These themes and aspects were asked in the survey based on sustainability standards and transit industry guidance. So we'd like to test our engagement tool with a live poll um, before we real, reveal the results of the survey. So you can access um, the, the engagement tool using the code on the screen. So you can pull up your camera on your phone to scan that QR code and it will take you directly to the poll. Or if you have a web browser, you can enter menti.com and enter the code shown on the screen, the 79067990. Before we share the results, we'd like you to predict which three sustainability themes uh, do you believe survey respondents ranked the highest? So of these six categories, air quality, community engagement, energy, mobility and accessibility, waste and water, which three do you think ended up being ranked relatively higher? All right, so based on your live poll results, we see that energy and air quality and mobility and accessibility are right there clustered together. A few for waste, water and community engagement. Thanks for that feedback. Right, so that's a good test of the tool. Um, you might want to keep uh, that tool handy as we'll be using it again later in the presentation. And now let's go ahead and look at the survey results and see how your poll compared. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, your polling results this, uh, this afternoon are very much similar and in line with the results of this survey. Um, I want to give you a quick lesson on how to interpret this information. So if you remember, we mentioned that the survey was sent to internal business leaders. So their responses uh, determined the placement of sustainability themes along the horizontal axis on the bottom. And so this represents the relative potential impact for each theme to New Jersey Transit's operation. 
So the further to the right, the greater the potential impact. And then the survey that was deployed externally to stakeholder groups determined the vertical access placement or how high. So placement, um, again, was based on stakeholder categories that we just reviewed and the higher up, the more important stakeholders, uh, more, the more important that theme is compared to others um, based on stakeholder input. So within that matrix, those sustainability themes in that upper right hand corner in that blue area represent those themes that had the greatest potential impact to New Jersey Transit and were of most interest to stakeholders. And as you shared today um, in our live poll, the results um, are very similar. So we'd like to offer just a few insights. So first, wanted to point out that all of the themes landed in that blue band. So all of them were ranked as relatively um, impactful or important issues. But like today, mobility accessibility, energy and air quality um, are all ranked slightly higher uh, compared to other aspects. And this makes sense because they are intrinsically connected. And while close, generally speaking, the importance to, uh, the importance to stakeholder survey ranked the themes just slightly higher than the themes for, um, from the internal subject matter experts on impact to New Jersey Transit. So there were two themes uh, where both stakeholders and New Jersey Transit leaders were mutually aligned on their ranking. So when you look at community engagement, the stakeholders rank the theme just above a seven and internal business leaders rank the theme just below a seven, but very close to each other. And similarly for energy, stakeholders rank the theme just above an eight and internal business leaders rank the theme just below eight, but again, very close relative to each other. We did see a, slight, uh, a slightly greater difference uh, between the feedback received from stakeholders and internal business leaders for the remaining topics. For example, air quality was ranked over an eight for importance to stakeholders while internal business leaders ranked at about a seven, but even then we're still within um, just about a point of each other. So with that, um, following the survey, we were also conducting industry benchmarking. Audrey, go ahead. Thanks, Marcella. For the benchmarking exercise, we selected five peer agencies uh, by considering regional proximity, um, agency size, along with we wanted um, some leaders in the sustainability field. So here, LA Metro it is recognized as a platinum signatory in APTA sustainability program. Um, APTA sustainability program has the most relevant standards for public transportation providers to follow. So uh, we talk about APTA, which is the American Public Transportation um, Association. We'll talk about APTA uh, guidelines a lot in this presentation. Uh, SEPTA and MBTA, Massachusetts Transportation, they're gold signatories and Chicago CTA and MTA in New York are identified as entry level participants in the APTA program as is New Jersey Transit. So we benchmarked these agencies against the environmental themes captured in the surveys that Marcella just described. And we also benchmarked them about against some social and financial themes. Today, we're really focused on the environmental themes. Uh, for, for our sustainability plan. Now, what we did is we reviewed any publicly available information related to those themes, and we categorized the information in accordance with the disclosure hierarchy that's shown here. Starting from the bottom, not reported means we did not find any publicly available information on that theme. It does not mean that an agency doesn't track it or is not talking about it internally, but we just couldn't find evidence of it. Next, disclosure really means that an agency is addressing the theme in a qualitative manner. Um, next up is measurement. It means an agency collects data, such as like air quality data and reports on it, but it does not have any performance metrics associated with it. And then the gold standard goals and measurement is when there is a metric that's established so that track, uh, progress can be tracked against a goal. So now I'll review some disclosure trends and industry insights, uh, which we found through our efforts. And the first community engagement, 
and this theme we considered three aspects. Uh, one is collaboration and partnerships. Another is good design elements, which was defined broadly uh, to be measures that enhance the customer experience through things like good communication and good design. And third was uh, transit oriented development initiatives. Now, all five agencies address at least one of the three aspects. Um, however, most, as you can see from this graph, address them qualitatively. That's the orange bar on the graph. Um, so, for example, LA Metro has a, a, a goal of partnering with communities to improve security near their train stations, a, a qualitative goal. SEPTA had the only measurable goal, and they were seeking to collaborate on um, a certain number of planning studies every year. Now, this theme does not have any APTA sustainability metric associated with it. Um, however, the theme is addressed in the APTA guidelines. Uh, relative to the peer agencies, New Jersey Transit has a robust community engagement program, as some of you may know, with long established partnerships uh, to safe ac to access to transit and transit oriented development. Okay, the next theme, mobility and accessibility, is another one that has no aptometric associated with it, um, and that is uh, consistent with our benchmarking results. Uh, of course, uh, this theme is. Uh, you know, New Jersey Transit's core mission, as most transit agencies' core mission. Uh, it includes um, aspects of multimodal connectivity, such as first and last mile initiatives and equitable access, in particular measures to increase transportation options for environmental justice populations. Now, all agencies address transportation equity and environmental justice initiatives, and all have fair pricing programs including reduced fare for low income seniors and those with disabilities. And, but only uh, LA Metro had a metric for equitable access. And that was that uh, they're seeking to make it that all county residents have a 10 minute walk or roll to high quality mobility options. Agencies are also committing to prioritizing service for those in greatest need and evaluating community travel patterns in relation to low income and minority populations as part of their bus redesigns. Next slide, please. Air qualities. Now, the remainder of the themes, uh, they do have APTA metrics established, and that makes sense because um, these environmental themes are more measurable than the two previous. And here, air quality includes minimizing greenhouse gas emissions, as well as criteria pollutants, such as carbon monoxide and particulate matter. Now, despite the fact that transit is inherently green, the five agencies all address the need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. LA Metro and SEPTA have clearly defined emissions reductions goals, and some of the agencies also track metric tons of avoided greenhouse gas emissions from riding transit. M MTA has reported greenhouse gas emissions to the climate registry, but, but not in recent years. Only two agencies make any mention of other pollutants. LA Metro has a has, uh, goal of reducing nitrogen di dioxide and particulate matter. Next slide, please. Energy covered such aspects as clean vehicle technology, energy efficiency in buildings, and renewable energy use. And of all the themes, this one had the greatest percent percentage of measurable goals. <clears throat> and all aspects are reported on by all five agencies. Four of the five agencies have zero emission bus fleet goals. Only two have energy reduction goals and plans to increase on-site renewable energy. Next slide. The water theme addresses two aspects, water consumption and water discharge quality, specifically management of wastewater and stormwater. LA Metro and SEPTA, again, have measurable goals to reduce water by reclaiming rainwater, graywater reuse, and or water efficient appliances. MBTA commits to monitoring water consumption at bus facilities and to use the data to identify and address excessive water consumption. 
Only two of the five has, have measurable goals related to stormwater management. Uh, SEPTA has a goal to increase green acres to reduce stormwater runoff, and LA Metro commits to increasing stormwater runoff capacity. Next slide. The last theme, waste, we're considering landfill waste that is not hazardous, since hazardous waste is heavily regulated. And we are talking about either operational or construction waste. And this category was split equally between qualitative discussion and measurable goals with all aspects reported on by all five agencies. Two of the five have landfill diversion rate goals. One of them has a goal related to construction debris and two qualitatively discuss recycling and reuse efforts. Next slide, please. So in summary, our general findings uh, were uh, are reported by looking at all the themes and each aspect across all five peer agencies. And as you can see from this graph, about half are addressed qualitatively and less than half are tracked and published with quantifiable metrics, although only 30% have the measurable goal and 7% uh, are not reported on. So from this, you can see there's a wide latitude in developing a sustainability plan. Each theme can be addressed along a, spectr a spectrum of rigor that is important to the agency. Jen is now going to discuss the themes recommended for inclusion in the sustainability plan moving forward and the data that we need to collect to measure metrics in accordance with industry standards. Great, thank you, Audrey. So the work that we've done to date and just reviewed with you all with the sustainability survey and the industry benchmarking has really validated that these are the priority themes that should be included in New Jersey Transit Sustainability Plan. You may have noticed that we added an additional theme, climate resilience. And this concept of climate resilience was a recurring theme that was brought up in the sustainability survey results and also in interviews with New Jersey Transit's key internal business leaders. And while resilience and sustainability are often used interchangeably, they are different. Um, and in the context of sustainability planning, we're defining resilience as planning and designing infrastructure to withstand the effects of climate change. Next slide, please. Um, so reflecting on these seven themes, we have a polling question for you. Um, what kind of strategies or initiatives do you hope to see in the New Jersey Transit Sustainability Plan? Um, a few examples of strategies or initiatives would be electrification of bus fleet, bus network redesign, alternative fuels, and on-site renewable energy. So um, if you could take out your phone and either scan the QR code on this slide or visit menti.com, and um, enter the code 7906-7990. Um, and just provide a very short answers to, you know, two to, two to four words um, with the types of strategies or initiatives that you would like to see. Okay. All right, so we're seeing, it looks like many in the energy realm electrification of the bus fleet bus network redesign fleet electrification prioritizing walking biking, or bus to the train green infrastructure balance among the three pillars of sustainability another for prioritizing walking and biking many related to electrification uh, multimodal bus stop access great these are they're really helpful. Thank you for providing these answers. We will, we will keep them in mind as we continue to develop the sustainability plan. Great. Um, so now that we have prioritized themes to be included in the sustainability plan, we need to understand what data is presently available to measure metrics and progress towards goals within these themes and identify areas where New Jersey Transit needs to focus its data collection moving forward. So we are currently collecting data for metrics required to be measured under APTA's sustainability commitment, 
which as Audrey mentioned, is really the leading industry standard for sustain measuring sustainability in transit. Um, APTA recognizes members who commit to becoming more sustainable in their operations and practices. And as part of their com sustainability commitment program, there are a set of sustainability indicators or metrics uh, that are required to be measured, which are shown on this slide and align with our prioritized sustainability themes. Um, and while we're currently focusing on the after metrics, there is the potential for other metrics to be added as we continue the planning process and start to build the sustainability framework um, or in future iterations of the sustainability plan. But here's really our starting point for the data collection effort. We've begun by exploring what data is currently available uh, during our recent interviews with New Jersey Transit team members who have responsibilities which, which align with each of these themes. Um, our team is identifying data sources and owners and obtaining data samples and really evaluating the quality and completeness of data sets. And we're also identifying where data is not available and the agency needs to focus the data collection effort moving forward. Next slide, please. Um, so in the next two slides after this one, we're gonna ask you a few questions about the level of transparency that you would like to see in the sustainability plan for each of the themes we're exploring. Um, so this graphic should look familiar from what Audrey just presented as part of our industry benchmarking. Um, so I'm gonna just provide a few examples of each level of transparency for the theme of water. Um, so the first example, um, not reported. So that's the lowest level of transparency. That would be if there, in the example of water, there was no publicly available information about water use. The next level of transparency would be for an agency to qualitatively describe water conservation measures. More transparent on the scale would be to establish and report on metrics. So in this example of water, uh, a water metric would be water use in terms of gallons consumed. And then the greatest level of transparency would be to have a measurable target in place. In this example, uh, reducing water consumption by 20% from 2020 baseline levels by 2025, and then having metrics in place to track progress towards that goal. And there's a number of factors that influence the level of disclosure, including the availability and quality of data, um, legislative mandates, and financial and institutional constraints. Next slide. Okay, so uh, please get Menti up on your device for the following two poll questions about the level of transparency. First is asking you to rate the importance of having performance metrics for the sustainability themes. Um, and again, as a reminder, an example of a performance metric for the water theme would be to report water consumption or water use. So you can scan the QR code or go to menti.com, um, enter the code 79067990, and you'll be asked to rate the importance of having performance metrics on a scale of one to five with one being not important and five being very important. Um, and you'll be asked to do this for each of the themes. Let a few more responses come in. So far, Energy, air quality, mobility, and accessibility would be at the top three themes for um, establishing performance metrics, which is in line with uh, really the results of the materiality assessment, rating those themes as, as having the greatest importance to stakeholders and greatest potential impact to the agency. Followed by climate resilience, waste and water are pretty aligned and uh, community engagement. Great. All right, next slide. All right, so the next question is asking you to rate the importance of having measurable targets for the sustainability theme. And as, as an example, 
um, of a measurable target for the water theme would be to reduce water consumption by 21% from 2020 baseline levels by 2025. And scan the QR code or visit menti.com and enter the code and you'll be asked to rate the importance of a scale of one to five with one being not important and five being very important. Okay, and it looks like these results are, are directly aligned with those themes that folks would like to see performance metrics established for. Of energy, air quality, and mobility um, ranked the highest, followed by climate resilience, waste, water, and lastly, community engagement. Great. Right. So I'm now going to hand it over to Dave to uh, discuss next steps and upcoming milestones. Thank you, Jen. We are currently collecting and evaluating data. And our next public webinar is in the fall, and the exact date is still be, to be determined. Uh, please continue to watch our sustainability website for updates. And I also want to mention that we're on schedule to complete the plan by the end of 2023. Next slide, please. So here we have uh, another survey for you to take a look at and respond to. Over the next several months, we'll be working on gathering data and beginning to draft our sustainability framework. We'd appreciate some early feedback on key sentiments that you would like to see in the sustainability framework. Please share some key words and concepts that the team should consider when moving forward. And we gave you guys some examples here. And uh, if you just take a look, take some time and, and give us some feedback, we'd really appreciate it. All right, transparency, quick build infrastructure, carbon reduction, sustainability leader, to name a few. So thank you very much. This is very good. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over to, um, to Liz. Thank you, Dave, and thank you all for participating in our live polls throughout the presentation. It was it was great to hear your feedback um, as we continue to um, move forward in our process. So now we'll go ahead and open it up for a public comment regarding the sustainability plan. We appreciate your input on the progress made thus far that lays a foundation for the plan. As a reminder, please raise your hand or press star three if you're calling in uh, to go ahead and queue. Um, each commenter will have one opportunity to speak today, and please keep comments to around two minutes. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at who we have queued. Uh, Rachel, I see that your hand is raised. I'll go ahead and send you a request to unmute. This is for a question uh, for the public comment. I think the sustainability plan is great. And my question is, will the sustainability plan include infrastructure projects or um, any types of projects, capital improvements that will be included in the state tip or the and, or any of the M local MPOs tips? Um, will it be kind of implementable in that sense? Thanks. Great. Thank you, Rachel, um, for that comment. Um, just to wrap it, so we're, we're looking at um, different infrastructure pieces that will be considered. And um, David, I'll, I'll toss that to you to, to respond. Thanks, Liz. Uh, as you guys know, uh, we are still developing the plan 
and um, we we hear your comment and we will consider that. I mean, there are a few other documents that are that are already out there for New Jersey Transit, so uh, we encourage you to look at that. But uh, we hear your comment and uh, we'll take that uh, in advisement. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Rachel, I'll go ahead and lower your hand. And again, we we appreciate the the feedback and participation today um, in the public comment, and we will have multiple touch points to keep the public engaged uh, throughout this plan. So I'll just note we don't have anyone currently with a hand raised, but feel free to to share share comment or feedback regarding the sustainability plan. Rachel, I'll go ahead. I see your hand raised. I'll go ahead and send your request to unmute. Thanks, Liz. Again, a little bit more of a question, but as we all know, New Jersey is a really integrated part of the tri-state area and the larger regional transportation system. And I think NJ Transit plays a really critical role in that. And so I am curious about how integration and coordination with other stakeholders in the area, such as the Port of Authority and MTA and SEPTA and like all of the systems that NJ Transit connects with, Amtrak, et cetera, uh, are participating in the sustainability plan. I know that you covered a little bit of that in the benchmarking, but I think that's a really crucial aspect considering how interregionally connected we are. And I'd love to hear more about that if possible. Great, thank, thank you, Rachel, um, for that for that that interest. Um, as we mentioned, we're in early stages of, of the plan. Um, and I'll, I'll let John touch on a little bit more of your question. Thanks, Rachel. I apologize for any background noise. I'm actually out of the office today. Um, yeah, listen, coordination with other agencies is especially important to us. You're right, we sort of sit at the nexus of a John, can you hear us? I think you just cut out for a moment. Give him a moment. While we're we're looking at the the audio there, John, um, I'll just also mention that that partner agencies we were also invited to take the sustainability it's survey. Oh. Being developed a little bit. Apologize for the background noise. There we go. John, we can hear you again. Oh, sorry. Again, I apologize for taking that also. So we are trying to coordinate. Uh, that process will continue throughout the development of the plan. Great. Thanks, John. James, I see that your hand is raised. I'll go ahead and send you a request to unmute. You mentioned at the beginning that, of course, transit is inherently sustainable. So I was just wondering if basically one of the main goals of this will be or should be um, increasing transit usage throughout the state. Yes, thank thank you for that for that comment, um, David. Maybe you could touch a little bit about how we're working with the other other plans in consideration for New Jersey Transit and aligned accordingly. Hi. Sorry about that, I had to unmute myself. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. So, um, as uh, Liz said earlier, we're still in the early stages of development of the plan. So, uh, we hear your comment and we uh, we will make sure that uh, we have discussion about it. And as we move forward, uh, we definitely will consider that. Um, so exactly how that's gonna shake out, you know, I'm not sure yet, but uh, more to come. So, uh, you know, please stay tuned. And, uh, and uh, like I said, we heard your comment. Thank you for that. Thank you all. Um... Richard, I see that your hand is raised. I'll go ahead and send you a request to unmute. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, go my ahead. My question is, does New Jersey Transit have existing sustainability goals and disclosure, or do they begin with a completed sustainability plan?
Thank you for that. Thank you for that question, Richard. Um, we're in. Again, we're we're in initial phases, so we're we're showing today what we have, and and we're set. We're basing off of the goals for for the ten year plan, um, and we continue to develop more um, as as we refine through this effort. Thank you. Thank you. I will also note that you can go ahead and direct any additional comments or, or questions um, to sustainability at newjerseytransit.com. Rachel, I, I see that your hand is raised. Um, I'll go ahead and send you a request to unmute. Thanks, Liz. I finally thought of a comment rather than a question. So my comment is that I think it's really great that the sustainability plan mentioned the, the fleet electrification as part of the objectives and the targets and a way to measure um, sustainability in its operations. And I think that another really critical aspect of a sustainability plan when we think about transportation technology is also the use of other types of technology like transit signal priority and off like offboard payment systems, electronic fares, which I know are already in place on a lot of services. Um, but it's those kinds of technologies that can help improve the transit experience and then by that you know encourage more people to ride transit which of course forwards our sustainability goals and so i think this plan really taking a critical look at how like, what technologies are available what technologies that are developing and emerging and how those can be incorporated for our sustainability targets is really important thank you thank you for that comment rachel and appreciate you participating today in in our public meeting. So I'll just uh, note to everyone that we'll leave the live comment um, open for a few more moments. As a reminder, if you do think of a comment afterwards or a question that you can go ahead and um, send an email to New Jersey or to sustainability at newjerseytransit.com. Okay, Richard, I see that your hand is raised. So I'll go ahead and send your request to unmute. Thank you. If New Jersey Transit would need to use ESG software system, would the procurement process begin after the completion of the sustainability plan? Could you repeat your, your question? Yes. If um, software, if a software system is need uh, to be used uh, to for the disclosure reporting of a sustainability plan, would the procurement process to get that software begin after the completion of the sustainability plan? Yeah, thank, thank you for that question. I'll go ahead and, and turn it over to Aaron um, to, to give some insights. Sure, thanks Richard for uh, your question and comment. We are definitely evaluate, evaluating um, the potential ESG software options as a part of our data gathering process. Um, so as we're developing this plan, um, we'll see, depending on what data we have and what we we find we need to track, um, we'll get a better understanding of what software is out there. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Again, we'll just leave the, the comment period open for another moment or so. Um, we appreciate everyone, everyone joining on today and hearing about our progress. Um, like has been mentioned, much has been done to date and we still have uh, a lot more work ahead of us. So we appreciate your feedback at this, this pivotal point as we continue to develop the framework moving forward. Ying, I see that your hand is raised. I'll go ahead and send your request to unmute. Ying, can we do a test? Are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. 
Okay, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, thank you for this um, uh, insight packed uh, session. It was really eye opening and, and informative. I'm wondering if um, uh, this uh, long term strategic uh, environmental sustainability, sustainability, sustainability plan um, will ultimately tap into um, the area of uh, corporate governance as well. It looks like a lot of the activities to date that New Jersey Transit has done are um, revolving um, on environmental, economic, and social. I know you touched upon on transparency, but I'm just wondering if you can shed more light on um, the uh, matrix and uh, um, areas in terms of corporate governance um, uh, or is it too premature? Yes, thank you, thank you for that that question. Um, Aaron, I'm curious, since you touched a little bit earlier on the presentation about um, the three aspects, you want to talk about talk about that a little bit more in relation to Ying's question? Sure, yes, the the matrix uh, or the three pillars you saw in the beginning um, was pulled from APTA's sustainability guidance, but we are definitely, um, you know, looking at other frameworks, um, such as how other organizations um, structure their sustainability plans, um, and we'll consider that so environmental social governance approach as well. Great, thank you, Ying. Go ahead and lower your hand. Again, I want to thank you all um, for, for these public comments and questions and interest in participating in the sustainability plan and providing feedback. Um, and so with that, we'll go ahead and, and move forward to, to the next steps. David, I'll let you go ahead and take it from here. All right, so um, here on this slide, you'll see that we are sharing our website and also our email address. I believe Liz mentioned that earlier, and uh, here it is uh, if you didn't catch it earlier. But uh, if you need to contact with any more comments, uh, please feel free to, to send us a note, uh, and we'd appreciate that. So next slide, please. And lastly, I just wanted to tell everybody, you know, we really appreciate everybody's time today and input, and we really appreciate the comments and feedback, and we really thank you. So we're going to keep working and keep working hard. Like I said earlier, we still have a lot of work to do, and, uh, and we're going to do it. And uh, we look forward to our, our next, which will be the third of the four uh, public webinars. So thank you once again. Have a good day.